Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. We're coming to you live from the 86th Annual STA Market Structure Conference in Washington, D.C. And helping me round out coverage, we have John Jacobs, who's the Executive Director for the Center of Financial Markets and Policy at Georgetown University, a place we are very familiar with at NASDAQ Trade Talks. And let's review some of the higher level themes that were discussed at STA. I would imagine execution, liquidity, getting ready for CAT, or a few of them. Absolutely, those are topics, and I think SCA is sticking to this netting. It's, you can never get away from the important arcane things like make or take, or the D market data, those kinds of issues. But I also see a great branching out this year, and I think it's really important that SCA started raising fixed income. And I think the great way to do that is to the panel they have with Chris and Jim Ross when they talked about fixed income ETFs, which are equity instruments that underline our fixed income. And it's just pointed out, I do think that that's a great move by the STA to broaden the focus of this away from just the arcane day-to-day -day normal market structure issues for equities, which are here and obviously need to continue to work on, but to start looking at the other areas for development and also to look at everything that's relevant, like the ETF rule. Mm -hmm. um, I think Stacy did a great job covering direct listings versus IPOs. We've seen what's happened in this IPO market this year. It's really, really interesting. I think that's a reflection of long-term trends in the IPO market over the years. And um, uh, some of the other issues are there. So it's been a very robust conversation. Yeah, I, I also picked on the same thing as well. ETFs seem to be in every conversation that we've had here, whether it's technology, regulation, um, interspersing with fixed income, the new products that are available. The new ETF rule is going to uh, allow more companies to bring product to retail investments. It's a massive uh, thing. 11 years in the making. They were posted in 2008, approved in 2019, but it levels the playing field. It clears out all that unfair, unequal, um, exemptive release that are out there. It allows more people to come to market with products. So I think that's a huge win for the industry. I think it's a really benefit fixed income ETFs, um, which I think are the growing part, right? 17% up in AUM versus 3% in for, for the equity ones. Um, I think as you and I were discussing earlier, I think the firms are recognizing that, the retail firms, by cutting commissions on ETFs to zero, right? It's trading for free. I think that's going to be pressure on the whole industry. And it's just another reflection of the continued move from active to passive. It's the continued role of passive investing in this industry. All right, John, thanks so much for joining us at SDA. And thank you for joining me on Trade Talks. I'm Joe Melantrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.